Hey, this segment is out of one of my training courses that I wanted to share. Really wanted to share it bad. I couldn't wait to release the course. So we're going to talk about traditional sales methods in this segment. This is going to be about the way that I grew up selling and why customers do what they do. The segment that follows this one is going to explain how to convert a shopper into a buyer. There are things that a salesperson should say and know, but there are many things that we should almost never ask. Customers normally have an agenda to gather as much information as possible by using the internet, making phone calls, and visiting uh, two or three dealerships. The goal of gathering all of the information is to get some product info, a lot of pricing info, and maybe even some terms from the different dealerships. The customer can often get away without giving much information back to the salesperson, you know, like name and number. But that's because the salespeople fail to ask for it, and if they do ask, then they don't know what to do with it. An example would be getting a customer's name and number. We need it because we need to call those customers back if they leave without buying, and a lot of them are going to do that. A few dealerships in each market have adopted a structured sell selling system that makes it easier and faster to help customers, while the majority of dealerships have a fly-by-the-seat-of-their-pants selling system. Obviously, the structured system creates a win-win environment, and it works in favor of the dealership and the customer by selling more customers for more gross profit with more repeat and referral business. The fly-by-the-seat-of-their-pants system weighs heavily in favor of the customer. Since the majority of dealers have used the unstructured system since the beginning of time, that's the one that your customers have become accustomed to. Step one with the customer is mislead the salesperson. They do this, but only because we ask some relevant questions at the wrong time. You know, a customer walks on the lot and we're trying to get some information from them. When the customer asks how much a bike is, we answer with a price. They say, wow, that's expensive. We ask, what's in your budget? They say, I don't know. We ask, what kind of a payment do you want? Now the little white lies begin. They say $200 a month on that $20,000 bike. Wouldn't it be ridiculous for a buyer to tell a salesperson how high they're really willing to go on a payment before we've even presented a payment to them? Before we've even tried selling the bike to them? This is where it begins. Who is starting this deal? The customer. Now, is this customer going to have to save face later on in this deal? The salesperson gets demotivated on the deal because they're doing the math in their head thinking, man, let's see, $20,000 bike and he's going to do a $200 a month payment? That math doesn't work. This guy's a flake. And it goes downhill from here. It never would have happened if we didn't ask the wrong questions, though. Now, the salesperson tells the sales manager this information. The manager says, wow, what a flake. How much can he put down? You and I know that 9 out of 10 customers, if not more, want to put zero down. But the thing is, people with money don't want to share this information with the salesperson. The customer just wants information on the bike so he or she can possibly make a buying decision. These are questions that we don't need to know this early in the sales process, but they're the questions customers have become accustomed to over the years. They don't like them, and these questions turn buyers into liars. Step two, they mislead you some more. Oftentimes, the customer's able to get the information they want, but they need just a little bit more, but not from you. So they say, well, that sounds good, Tommy. I just need to think it over tonight. Perfect, we think. As a new salesperson, I'm thinking, I've probably got a deal here. He's going to come back and buy this tomorrow. Hey, Mr. Sales Manager, I let him go, but he's coming back tomorrow. Should I put a sold tag on that bike? You've got nothing. What are customers doing at this point? They're working the system. If a salesperson asks the wrong questions, the buyer will give the wrong answers. Why would they work the system? Because it works. Step three, the customer won't answer the phone and fails to return my messages. I don't understand. Step four, what does that do to a new salesperson or even an experienced one? It not only kills most of the deals, but it kills their attitude. There is a better way. So I will see you in the next segment. Thanks for watching.